All right, so I just solved this problem. It deals with the geothermal heat pump. And I thought, hmm, I better check to see if this condenser will actually work. And so I'm digressing from thermodynamics, the study of thermodynamics at our university is 4293, ME4293. And I'm kind of digressing into the study of heat transfer, which is a different class, 4313. But um, what I'm going to talk about is uh, what we call pinch analysis or approach temperature analysis for a heat exchanger. And when you have a heat exchanger, which is counter flow, so on this side it's flowing this way and that side it's flowing this way, and one of the fluids is undergoing a phase change here in the condenser, the refrigerant 134A enters as superheated. It spends quite a bit of time inside the condenser changing phase going so it's two phase from saturated vapor to saturated liquid and then it comes out a uh, subcooled liquid um, whenever you have a, a fluid doing that you need to uh, check to see if you always have a delta T within the heat exchanger so what do we mean by delta T well it that's what drives the heat transfer in the in the heat exchanger on this end what we have is a delta t of 54 minus 40 so the temperature difference that drives it on this end is 14 whoops is equal to 14 degrees c maybe you call this end one and then over on this end you have the delta t on the second end it's 30 degrees and 20 degrees, so it's a 10 degrees C delta T. It looks great. It looks like this is going to have a plenty of delta T where the hot is, you know, 14 degrees C is pretty hot. Uh, a, a lot. Of, the de temperature difference is pretty significant. Likewise, 10 degrees C, the temperature difference is pretty significant. So this looks from the outside like this should work. But as we know right over here on this temperature entropy diagram as you change phase you're going to come down and then spend a lot of time at a constant temperature which is the saturation temperature for the condenser pressure and so at 9.2 bar that pressure right here you find that that's about 36.3 degrees C so a lot of, of the the refrigerant within this heat exchanger is around 36.3 degrees C. Oh, it comes in at 54, but it it's de-superheats until it's saturated vapor. Then it spends a lot of time or space or a length inside this heat exchanger condensing. Then finally it comes out at 30 degrees, so it comes out uh, cooler, so it's been subcooled a little bit. Anyway. I want to just check that. Again, this topic typically is outside of the range of topics in our heat transfer class and definitely outside of the range of the topics in our Thermo 2 class. And it's kind of a combination of both of these uh, that leads to a pinch analysis. Okay, so how do we set this up? Well, we focus only on the condenser. And then what we do is we bin it up. We divide it into bins. So maybe I divide it into 10 bins. One, two, three, four. You get the idea. Or maybe I divide it into 100 bins. And then I think, okay, if I have 10 kilowatts being transferred in the entire thing, maybe I have 10 bins and I have Q dot of one kilowatt per bin. You know, and then another one kilowatt, one kilowatt, one kilowatt, etc. And then what I do is I do a little check, energy balance check right here to say, okay, it comes in, the cold comes in at 20 and the hot leaves at 30. Can I predict the temperature here for the cold as well as here for the hot? And you can do that and you just continue that process. Now for the air, this is really easy because uh, what you want to do is, is, is if you um, bend it up and it had a delta T from inlet to outlet of 20 and you had 10 bins, then basically the, 
the overall temperature difference was 20 degrees C, that's 40 minus 20, which gives you the 20. And then the delta T per bin, if you had 10 bins, would be uh, 2. And so this would be 20, then 22, then 24, then 26, then 28, 30, etc. That's how you would get the temperature for the cold fluid throughout. Okay. Once you have the temperature of the cold fluid throughout, what you can do is plot it on a um, XY plot where here the temperature, and let me change color a little bit. It's coming in at 20, and it's going out at 40, and it's trying to line this up so that it's 0 and then 10 as a function of Q dot, 10 kilowatts. It would just be a straight line like that. Okay, it's a little more challenging for the refrigerant because of the phase change, but we already know what the shape looks like. It's revealed right here on the TS diagram. You're going to come down, then you're going to be flat for a long way, and then you're going to come down again for the refrigerant. Okay, so um, this was, let me put some numbers here. That's 20. Here's 30. Here's 40, here's 50, and it comes in, what, 54. So the hot is coming in right here around 54. I'm going to come down. Well, it's got to come down to about 36. Maybe it comes down, hits 36 right here, and then it's flat, and then it's going to go out at 30. Maybe the profile looks like that. Well, what we do is we'd say, well, what was the delta T here? Well, that was our 10. Remember, that's our, our um, 30 minus 20. That would be 10 degrees. What was our delta T on this end? 54 minus 40. That's 14. And so maybe it, the delta T, we're checking it. And we can see that it's not a uniform value everywhere. Maybe it uh, goes up and then goes back down. And maybe right here is our minimum. Our minimum delta T that drives the heat transfer in that segment of our heat exchanger. Now, if the minimum is above a few degrees, that's great. If the minimum gets to zero or below zero, then we have a problem. Basically, if it becomes negative, then that heat exchanger just won't work. It just will not work. So um, what I want to do is first show you this plot for this refrigerant 134A in a condenser and air side over here with the 100 bins and then step through how to make that calculation. So on the next plot, I've made that calculation for this. So here is, let me just kind of summarize again, is 54 degrees C. Over here is 30 degrees C. Right there is 36.3 degrees C. Again, this was refrigerant 134A with that 9.2 bar pressure. So the pressure was 9.2 bar. And then here was the air coming in. And the air came in at 20 and left at 40. And what, what do we find is that pinch temperature down, 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 and then, oops, we got a problem right here. That's not going to work. Basically, in our model, if you think about it, in this region, the cold fluid is continuing to heat up as it moves from right to left. And yet, the cold fluid is higher temperature than the hot fluid. So, it looks good from our end here, you know, 10 degree delta T on this end and 14 degree delta T on this end. But when you go inside and do more detailed calculations, this will not work. This is going to uh, not be able to do that. So I know a student was probably asking, well, what, what's going to happen then? Well, if you control the input temperature and the input temperature, and you control the mass flow rates, leave them all alone. 
basically you're not going to promote that much heat transfer. The, the air is not going to come out at 40. Maybe it comes out at 35 or 36 exit temperature. And then this refrigerant, maybe it'll come out at, uh, you know, kind of like a push it over. It'll come out still a two phase region over here. Um, it'll, it'll come down and then go across, but not even be subcooled. It'll just move those curves apart until it does work for the size of your heat exchanger, etc. Okay. Well, how did I generate this plot? Again, we have uh, error is easy. So I like to do it this way. Think of the x-axis as a fraction and start it at zero and go all the way to one. And if you have a bunch of points or how many points you have, again, this one was 100, 100 bins, so 101 points. And then we have the temperature for the air. And we brought it in at 20, took it out at 40. You just have to add that much, that much, that much, add that much until it matches. And so that's pretty straightforward. And then what I do is I talk about the enthalpy of the refrigerant. Okay, because we know what the enthalpy of the refrigerant over here is. That's at 1. That's our highest enthalpy that enthalpy over there is um, 2 286.3 uh, ish okay what about the enthalpy of the refrigerant leaving when it's subcooled liquid well that's the lowest enthalpy it's around 91.49 so I have to get what is the overall delta T, not the overall delta T, overall delta H for the refrigerant. That would be the 286.3 minus the 91.49. And for this problem, that comes in at 194.79 kilojoules per kilogram. Then I say, what is the delta H per bin? If I had 100 bins, 1.9479 so it just add that much for this one add it for that one and continue the process and make sure it matches at the end and it will if you, everything's right now i want to use that enthalpy knowing that the pressure of the refrigerant doesn't change in the condenser it stays 9.2 bar and i want to get the temperature of the refrigerant okay well, I go a little slow here because um, what happens is, is in this early region down here, it's subcooled liquid, subcooled liquid, or just put, just put liquid, L-I-Q, liquid, liquid. Then it'll become saturated liquid. Then it's two-phase, a whole bunch of the way, two-phase, and then finally it'll be saturated vapor, uh, vapor and then superheated vapor and superheated vapor. Okay, so um, what you do is you have to use a computer program. That's the best way. And you say, give me the temperature as a function of the pressure, which is not changing, always 9.2 bar, and the enthalpy. And that enthalpy is changing. And so in some places, it'll say, oh, that's enthalpy is below this H is below H of F. Oh, it's liquid. Then it'll look it up as a liquid. If the H is between H of F and H of G, then it says, oh, it's in the two-phase region. It'll just return the saturation temperature of 36.3 degrees C. And then if the enthalpy is greater than H of G, oh, well, it's in the superheated vapor region. And then it uses tables or other equations to evaluate it. But that's how you would get this into the right form. What I want to do is I want to also show you, if I can, what it looks like here in Excel code. So I have, let me just click right here on this red line. You can see I'm plotting the fraction of Q starting at 1 and going doesn't matter if you start at zero or start at one, but it has to be consistent. And it, the refrigerant starts at 54 and goes down. Okay, and this, you can see that a lot of the 
time it's at that saturation temperature for the um, uh, 9.2 bar and then for the air okay same thing here I'm kind of going backwards I'm going from 1 down but it starts at 40 and then you subtract and subtract and subtract and subtract and that's how you would get this plot once you plot it you take a look and you say okay we have a little bit of a problem with the pinch temperature it's even though it looks good on this end 14 degrees C good on this end it's 10 degrees C in the middle it's not going to work so it'll violate basically the second law of thermodynamics if you want to pu push it that far so let me jump back here and just say again this is kind of a combination of study of heat transfer as well as uh, thermodynamics you put them together and then you can go inside and take a look um, at the uh, temperature profiles within the heat exchanger especially when one of the substances is undergoing a phase change and in this case refrigerant 134a is condensing well hopefully you found that interesting thank you very much